open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. Open, open the floodgates of heaven. Come on, sing, church. Let it rain. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Good morning, my precious brothers and sisters. You know we love coming to you with these morning broadcasts. Standing with you, speaking the word of God into your life to encourage you, to strengthen you. God is on your side. You know, on this morning, we're talking about how to find God's will for your life. And as I'm about to go into this teaching, I really need you to pay close attention. This is one of those messages that you need to listen to over and over and over again. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, as I'm about to jump into the word of God with your people, speak to them, minister to them, strengthen them, encourage them, bring clarity in their lives. Bring clarity in their lives. Someone needs to make an important decision and they have no clue which direction to go and which step to take. Lord, bring clarity as I share the word of God with them on this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now listen, I want to take you into the word of God. In the book, I'm going to go back to John 16, but I want to start in the book of John chapter 10. And the reason why I didn't worship as much on this morning is because I really feel like you need to get this word in your spirit, man. This is something that's very crucial for all of our lives. And this is, these are scriptures that the Holy Ghost has taught me and my wife. These are things we walked out. I know what it is to leave the Bahamas, father and mother, family, just forsake all. To follow the call of God, went to Bible school. Are you listening to me? And I met my beautiful wife, Pastor Amy, in Bible school. But all of that only came to pass in our lives because we both were following God's will for our lives. Amen? So what I want to share with you is really personal to us, personal in our walk with God. These are scriptures we constantly lean on when God's about to give bring give new direction to our lives and we have to figure out exactly what God is saying to us and what he wants us to do next. These are scriptures that we constantly walk walk through and pray over and meditate on until we until we understand exactly what it is that God wants us to do. Now listen to the word of God, John chapter 10, I'm going to read verse 4 and verse 14. Listen to the word of God. Jesus said, and when he puts forth his own sheep, he goes before them. Watch this. And the sheep follow him for they know his voice. Jesus said, and when he puts forth his own sheep, he goes before them. I'm using the King James Bible. And the sheep follow him for they know his voice. Listen to verse 14. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and I'm known of mine. There's no way you can find God's will for your life if you don't have a proper understanding of God's word. That's why Romans chapter 12 verse 2 says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed in your mind be transformed by the renewing of your minds that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. There's a good will of God. There's a perfect, there's a acceptable will of God. And there's a perfect will of God. Sometimes when you take a direction and God's leading you and sometimes it's, it's his good will, but that good will progresses into acceptable and then you find God's perfect will. Now watch, let's go into John 16, 13. We're going simp- to begin to simplify things and break it down. Amen. John chapter 16, verse 13. Listen to what the Bible says. The Bible says, however, or how be it, when he, the spirit of truth has come, Jesus said, the Holy Ghost will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak and he will show you things to come. So Jesus said, 
when he, the spirit of truth has come, he's talking about the Holy Ghost. He said, the Holy Ghost will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself or on his own authority or on his own accord, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Now, Jesus is not just talking about any truth right now. The truth he is talking about is the word of God. Because John chapter 17, verse 17, Jesus said, thy word is truth. So without the word of God, you will have a complicated time finding God's will for your life. Because David said in Psalms chapter 119, verse 105, thy word, O Lord, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. Do you see that? So God uses the word of God to speak to us, to give us instruction, to confirm our decision, to let us know if we're going in the right direction. Now watch this. The word used right there in John 16 and 13, when he said, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. That word guide right there means to show the way or to lead on one's way. Wow, that's powerful. This is what the Holy Ghost does. Let's go into Psalms chapter 25, verse 4, verse 8, verse 12, and then verse 13. Listen to what David said. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Psalms chapter 25, verse 4. Show me the right path. Show me the right path, O Lord. Point out the road for me to follow. No, God's not going to let you sit here and be guessing. He's going to make it plain and simple. He's going to make it undeniably real to you that this is the direction you need to go in. Listen to what David said in verse 8 of the same chapter. The Lord is good and does what is right. He shows the proper path to those who go astray. Man, if you make a mistake, the Holy Ghost will help you get back into the will of God. Amen. Watch this. This is in verse 12 of the same chapter. Who are those who fear the Lord? He will show them the path they should choose. You see, God's not going to leave this up for you to just make your own decision because you belong to God. Your life is not your own anymore. Listen to verse 13. They, listen to verse 13, it says, the person that God is leading, they will live in prosperity and their children will inherit the land. Well, when you walk in obedience to the word of God, it leads to prosperity. It leads to you living a successful life. And when I say successful life, I'm talking about based on God's will. Because you know you can be persecuted like John the Baptist and still be successful. He lost his head, but he was still successful. Now watch this. Listen to Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. Man, that's powerful. Listen to Isaiah chapter 30, verse 21. And your heirs shall hear a word behind you saying, This is the way, walk ye in it, when you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left. My God. Now watch this. The word again used right there. Wait, give me one second. Let me read this. Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3. The Bible says, call unto me. This is God talking. Call unto me and I will answer thee and show you great and mighty things which you know not. The same word show that he used in John 16, 13. He's using the same word again in Jeremiah 33 verse 3. But listen to what else that word means when he said, call unto me and I will show you great and mighty things which you know not. Similar to John 16 and 13. Jesus said the Holy Spirit will show you things to come. Now watch what all that word show means in Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3. The word show means to make conspicuous which means attention getting. Something that is big. Something that is bold. Crying. Something that is eye catching. Something that is something that is featured. Something that is gross in evidence indiscreet, large, marked, outstanding, prominent, spectacular, striking, and completely obvious. So when it is God's will for your life, are you hearing me? When it's God's will for your life, everything begins to fall into place. I'm not talking about when the devil is trying to give you false hope and making you think something is working out that's not working out. No, I'm talking about when circumstances and situations that you had no control over, that you know only God could be working this thing out. 
Man, the, you, you got the job. You applied for the job at the right time. You got the interview at the right time. My God. And everything just fell into place. And you were hired. And before you know it, you were making a much more larger sum of money than you ever made in your entire life. I'm talking about you applied for the mortgage. The mortgage worked out. The loan worked out for you to get the house. You got a better paying job. Just, I'm talking about things just line upon line, precept upon precept coming together. You were in the right place at the right time or at the right school to meet the young lady that became your wife. I'm talking about supernatural things. God just ordering your steps. You know the Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Listen to what the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 48 verse 17. Listen to what the new international version said. This is what the Lord says, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord your God who teaches you what is best for you, who directs you in the way you should go. Listen to how the message Bible says it. And now the master God sends me and his spirit with this message from God, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am God, your God who teaches you how to live right and well. I show you what to do and where to go. Man, that's powerful. Listen to Psalm chapter 32, verse 8. The Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and watch over you. Listen to Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Put God first. Seek him through prayer. Seek him through fasting. Spend time with him through worship. And as you spend time and quit trying to rush God, you got to pay the price and wait before God. If it takes several months, do not jump up and make that decision unless you know like you know without a shadow of a doubt that it is God's will for your life. I give myself away. My God, my God. Isn't God just awesome? Don't you just love him with all of your heart? your mind, your soul, your body and strength. And my advice to you is listen to this message over and over and over and over again until, until these scriptures become real to you. Do not rush ahead. Do not be hasty in that decision. Your decisions are too important. There are a lot of people that made the wrong decisions, didn't wait on God, and they are paying the price. They are living in some terrible consequences. But even if you made a mistake and made wrong decisions, you can make it right with God. Are you listening to me? God is the God of another chance. And I believe God is sending this message to many of you who made some foolish decisions. I've made foolish decisions. My wife has made foolish decisions. But because God is a loving God, He gives us another chance and sends a word like this to warn us, to slow us down so we can wait on Him. My God, my God, He loves you this morning. Listen, if you didn't have a chance to subscribe to our channel, Click on the red and white button on the bottom right side of the screen if you're watching us through YouTube. If you're watching us through Facebook, like us on Facebook. Follow us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Sean Pinder Ministries. Also, send us a friend request. We'd love to have you a part of our Facebook family. If, you've, if, you, are, if you have a Twitter account, follow us on Twitter. We are on Twitter as well, on LinkedIn. Connect with us. We love God's people. God spoke to me and said, feed my sheep. That's exactly what we are doing. We love you guys. We don't take you for granted. We appreciate you. So a seed into the ministry. Support the work of God. Amen. This ministry is a blessing to you. Support the work of God. No gift is too big or too small. We love you guys. We appreciate you. And we look forward to being with you again on tomorrow morning as we talk about a season of open doors. A season of open doors. God bless you. See you on tomorrow. Bye-bye.